Hello and welcome to Cab Simulations. Today we're going to be talking through our newest firmware update uh, and this is um, for anybody whether you've already got some of our existing firmware on there or whether you've just got one of our new devices and you're setting it up for the first time. This will be the same process for everybody. The first thing I want to talk about is if you already have some of our firmware and especially if you were using or are using version 2.4.2 of our firmware then it's very important that you completely uninstall MobiFly and reinstall MobiFly. This is because there are some leftover files which need to be removed. The safest way to ensure that we are removing only the files that need to be removed and not removing anything that's important for MobiFly is just to do a clean uninstall and just reinstall it. So go to mobiflight.com, download the installer, um, and once you've uninstalled MobiFlight, reinstall it. Once, sorry, before you do that, obviously make sure that you've got any files backed up that you may, um, may have been using just to be on the safe side, but where MobiFlight's installed, you shouldn't be sort of saving any, um, any files in there directly. But just in case, make sure that any of your existing configs, you've got them backed up just in case they are lingering around. But as I said, do the uninstall and then completely reinstall MobiFlight. When you do so, make sure that you have the beta version box ticked so that you can get the newest version, which is 10.1.4.2. Um, if you haven't got that box ticked, just tick it, click OK, and then restart MobiFlight, um, and it will prompt you to download the newest version. Once you've got all of that done, you're up to date on 10.1.4.2, and you've, if you had some of our old firmware that you've uninstalled and reinstalled, um, you can just double check that everything's correct. Go to your desktop, find the MobiFlight icon, and right click it and just click Open with File Location. This will take you to the install directory of where MobiFlight is. And what we want to do is just make sure that the directory looks like this. The most important thing is make sure that under Community, we have the CAV Simulations folder. And within the CAV Simulations folder, the easiest way to double check that it is the correct one is if you go to Profiles, you should see these three directories, the MSFS 2020, the P3D, and the x 12. This is only on the newest update. So if you've only got an MSFS folder, it means you haven't got the correct files installed. So it means that you probably did have some lingering files um, and when you did the reinstall, they uh, they didn't pull down the newest one. So once you see that you've got this directory, then you uh, most likely have the correct install. And then you can also check as well by going into the firmware folder and making sure that there is not only the 2.5.2, you won't see this backup one, that's just for me. You'll see 2.5.2, 2.5.3, um, and then the 2.5.2 and 3 for the uh, the Pico as well, and then the resets. So ignore that backup file. You should have those highlighted six items there, but the most important one is making sure that you've got the 2.5.3 versions in there. If they're there, then everything is good, um, and if you've got those, the profile folders there as well, everything is good. Now, while we're here, we're going to keep this window open because we're going to need to come back to it because we can obviously find some of our preset profiles are all in here for you. Um, and also we have our uh, board configuration files in here as well. So we'll leave that open and just leave it in the background for now. So we can see that we've got some MobiFlight mod, uh, uh, config open here. We're going to go to the MobiFlight modules tab and we can see that we've got some of our already installed firmware. Um, this is a prototype version of the firmware, but you can see that it's 0 0.0.1, um, which is, means that we're not running the latest firmware. Uh, and then we also have this compatible uh, device plugged in. This is a completely blank uh, Arduino uh, ready to have the firmware put on it. Again, if you have any version of our firmware that is not 2.5.3, no matter what firmware it is, if you take that board and you go right click on it to bring up the context menu, just simply click reset board and that will completely wipe the board and bring it back to this state here. So now, just to recap, if you're a brand new user, you would have downloaded MobiFlight and you would have got 10.1.4.2 installed. If you were an existing user, we've uninstalled MobiFlight and we've reinstalled it 
and we've checked that our directories have the files that we expect. We've got uh, a blank Arduino plugged in or a brand new Arduino. If we have an already existing one with some different firmware on it, we have right clicked and we've clicked reset to bring the board to this compatible state here. So now everyone should be up to the same level. The next thing we have to do is put the firmware on it. So we are going to click update firmware here. We will choose CAV simulations and we will choose CAV mega. We simply click that and it will install the firmware for us. And we can see that that was successful. And here we can see 2.5.3. We have the latest firmware on this CAV displays here. Now this is what it will show, just CAV displays. There's no devices connected to this. We can see the one underneath it has uh, devices connected. But now this has got our blank firmware on it. The next thing we need to do is add devices. Now you can choose add device from here. We can go to custom devices and we can choose one of our um, LCD displays here. But we won't do that just yet. Just to make sure things get set up and working, we're going to use one of our pre-existing configs. So we're going to click Open. And here, uh, we, it will bring you to some directory. What we want to do is we want to just go back to this um, folder that we had open, where we, when we right-clicked to view the file location. Um, and we're going to copy this here. The directory will be exactly the same for you if you're using Windows, except instead of uh, this here, it will be your username. So you feel free to just copy that if you can't find it, but it will be under uh, your users, your username, and then app data, local, MobiFlight, the connector, and community cab simulations. So now that we've got that, we can actually just simply paste that, uh, paste that into this control bar here, click go, and it will take us to this direction. Then we're going to go to this config folder I spoke about earlier. And in here, we have three pre-built configs. One for the glare shield, which contains one FCU, two EFIS. The overhead, which contains two battery voltage, two radios. And the pedestal, which contains uh, four radios, one TCAS, and one rudder. We're just going to click the glare shield for now and click open. Now we can see that we have the FCU, the EFIS left, and the EFIS right. If you have only one or two or none of these in it, and they're not connected, don't worry. It does not matter. Um, as long as you've got at least one of these, well, you don't even need at least one of them, but as long as you have these uh, connected, it won't care that some of the others are missing. Now, what we can do here is we can click on the FCU, and here we can choose our pins. And we've got the data, the CS, and the clock. Um, these are in the wrong order. There'll be a fix coming round to put them into uh, the expected order, which is likely CS, clock, and data. Um, but for now, just make sure that you put the, the pin numbers in the right way. Now, if you're using one of our Arduino shields, then these pin numbers have already been set up for our Arduino shields, so you don't need to do anything. You can just leave them with these preset numbers. Um, and then you can double check the EFIS left and EFIS right if you're using those, just to make sure those are the correct pin numbers there. Um, but again, if you're using this standard, then all of these have been set for you already. Um, so we can just click here. And now we have this config loaded. We need to actually up, uh, open. We need to actually upload it to the board. Um, so once we click upload to config, we'll say, yes, we do really want to do that. It will upload it and finish. And now we can see the CAV logo is there. We have CAV Glare Shield because that's the name of the config. And we have our devices set up here. Then we can click OK here. Now, I have a config already open here. So what we're going to do is go back to this folder that we left open. Um, and we should still have the, uh, the address bar on our clipboard, but just in case, I'm going to copy it again. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click File, Open. And here, we actually uh, want to make sure that we uh, go to where we've just pasted, copied from and pasted in. And this time, we're going to go to Profiles. And I'm just going to use the Fly-by-Wire A320. So I'm going to go to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I'm going to go to the Fly-by-Wire. And in here, we have four configs. We have an all-in-one config, a glare shield config, an overhead, and a pedestal. And the all-in-one is obviously all of these combined. Now, we only need to work with just the glare shield for now. So we will click 
glare shield and we will click open. Now you'll immediately see we've got an orphan serial box pop up. That's because I programmed the configuration uh, on a Arduino with this serial number and we've now got a different serial number with, which is the one that we've just uh, put the new firmware on. So we'll make sure that this is highlighted and then if you've got multiple boards assigned just make sure you choose the right one. Um, it, it may be a different one so if you don't see it initially there click the drop down and we're going to just double check and make sure that we choose the glare shield option. So we want to assign this one here which we should always have that same serial number for you there EA3 to whichever serial number you have for your glare shield and then we're going to click assign and OK and then we can uh, click file save as and once that's open you can navigate to a directory where you want to save your file to just for the desktop or whatever um, I would avoid overwriting the original one in the um, uh, in this directory here because as we push updates it's likely that these files will keep getting overwritten so you don't want to modify your config and then the next time you update maybe flight one of these gets updated and you lose your work so save it into a new directory and then once you've saved that every time you save it it'll be working with the new one that you've saved of course. I uh, What I had to do there is uh, actually exit and restart Moby Flight, so I apologise about that, I had a bit of a recording issue. Um, there may be occasions as also as well where the, conf where the configuration has not yet been saved. Um, if you try to run it when it's not saved you may get an error as well, so make sure that the, uh, the file has been saved. Um, and then once you click test, uh, it will start running through and you should see all of the outputs um, flicking on your displays. Now it's only pushing random data so you're going to see just zeros and ones um, and you're not going to see a full display so don't think the display is is broken um, you're just going to see probably a, a zero and a one over the speed uh, a zero over the heading um, a zero in the altitude and zero one one in the uh, the level change and then the ether should just display zero one two three as long as you're getting some data output then the displays are working so we can click stop and then we can just open up a simulator we can click run uh, it won't work because I haven't got a simulator connected uh, and then even without a simulator connected you'll just see lots of zeros uh, and some uh, some display on your uh, output on your displays now I've had a few people message me and go oh my god I've got loads of these red arrow uh, exclamation marks there's something wrong um, there's nothing wrong uh, these are expected to be there um, so for example we don't want the speed value activated when the max being displayed mark sorry is being displayed so all this means is that it's um, it's not it's not connected uh, or active um, you may also just see occasionally one of these errors down here about a transform error again don't worry that's just an initial startup um, that that's a it's a one-off thing you you won't you won't sort of see that again um, just make sure that when you have a simulator running that the output is being displayed correctly on the display which it will be um, but yeah that's that's as simple as it is uh, to set up once you've now got that uh, sort of up and running you can sort of go in um, if, say if you've say if you've only got uh, the FCU you can just delete the uh, the EFIS here you can just um, remove that device uh, and uh, the if it's right. If you do remove the devices then uh, just make sure you remove all of the ro rows here that relate to that device as well. Um, just delete those rows um, because if you remove the device the config is still expecting it to be there so you'll probably get some errors there. So you can remove the device uh, from the module no problem at all just make sure you then also remove the uh, appropriate rows for um, whichever device you're having there as well uh, and that is it uh, that is exactly how uh, it gets up and running um, as I mentioned earlier we do have the, the pedestal and the overhead ones here as well uh, you just do those the exact same way you just instead of choosing the glare shield config you would choose the overhead or the pedestal config and they're all in there um, and again if you went to open the new uh, config you can choose an all-in-one if you've got all three devices connected if you've got just the overhead you can choose the overhead config and the pedestal config uh, and there's a support in there for the headwind the uh, the a310 
Uh, there's a few in development here, so you probably won't see these here, but don't worry about those. This is just for me working in them, obviously. Um, at the moment, we've got a, a working uh, G Hill config as well. This is an original one that we had, which was confirmed working. Um, and the glare shield one there also worked this all-in-one config v2 is one that i'm working on at the moment but it's not it's not fully i'm not fully happy with it i think there's still a few little bugs in there that need squashing but it's um uh, it's mostly working uh, certainly flyable and in the next plane 12 we've got flight factor a320 the uh, jar design 330 and all of the toeless aircraft if you open that config it'll work for any of them yeah. Um, but that is uh, that is essentially it. Uh, it is genuinely, I think the we've tried to make this as easy to install as possible. We don't have to do anything outside of MobiFly. It's all everything you need is in MobiFly. As long as you have this 10.1.4.2 option, then everything that you need is all in the um, the MobiFly install directory. And again, we can get there by just right click, open file location. And this will take us to our community folder and everything is within CAV simulations folder here. Um, so you can always get to that uh, by going to uh, your users, your username and then uh, the uh, app data directory from there. So that's pretty much it for this video. Every update that will come out forward from this will now make things uh, a lot easier. Um, you will only ever have to do the uh, the update firmware um, when one is available. Um, the only reason we've had to do this uh, if previous users have to uninstall and reinstall is because we did do a major change to how the firmware works um, going forward to mean that you only have to just do this update from in here. But that meant there was a few of the older files left over um, from how the previous firmware worked. So this isn't something you're going to have to do every time and it is why i'm encouraging everybody to do this now so that once you move forward the updates are much easier because as we keep pushing updates uh, for these out um, it's going to get more difficult to go from the older firmware to the newer firmware so that's why we're trying to get this all out now so anything 2.5.3 onwards um, all the changes that have been done uh, mean that you only have to just do these updates uh, um, so please do enjoy uh, this new firmware i i really do encourage you to go through and uh, get it up to date with 2.5.3 um, and if you do have any install problems please do contact us on the discord channel um, i've had a couple of people with these sort of weird pre-existing files uh, histories which we've we've managed to work out so if you've gone through this video and things are still not working for you, don't don't worry too much. It's not something that you've probably done. It's probably just a leftover file. Please just drop me a message on the Discord, create a ticket there, uh, and we can we can get that sorted out for you very quickly. It's a, it's a it's a, it's a very quick fix. Um, yeah, more than happy to uh, to obviously to uh, to help you out with that. There's also a few people on there that may even be able to help you in my absence um, who have been through uh, that same problem. So definitely jump on the Discord uh, and give us a, give us a message on there. So I'm aware this video is probably getting a bit long already, so I'm going to end it here. And as I said, I'll do future videos on uh, how to set up these configs. So thanks for watching and happy landings.